Welcome to the Wild Type Podcast. I'm Melissa Slizzards. I'm Neptune the Chameleon. And, and we're, we're your reptile, reptile girlies. girlies. Well, how have you been today? What's new with you? I mean, literally, I saw you less than 24 hours ago, so not a lot. <laughs> has, has anything happened since I saw you yesterday? <laughs> I did go to a bridal shower today, which oh, is why I'm a smidge overdressed. Cute outfit. I'm a little overdressed today. In the best way possible, though. We We try to go very, like, comfy casual yeah, here. Yeah, I'm wearing a, a Wicked we love the Wicked, though. That was actually the first Broadway play I ever saw in New that York was, City. That was mine, too. I like, didn't know on that. Broadway. Oh, no, same. Yeah, yeah. No, that's where I got this shirt was from. Oh, my God, that's so cute. From, and I, um, I went with my mom, and I got um, a little green slushy, uh-huh. and then this t shirt. Yeah, I loved Alpha. It's, it's one of my favorite shirts, and the it's graphic has held up Honestly, really well for in, the years. That's impressive because I went when I was 16, so it was like 15 years ago. <laughs> I would have been. Mm, yeah 17 maybe yeah okay yeah 16, so 17 close yeah because totally it was like uh, i think spring break of like my senior year of high school or something like that i think that would have been like four years after me but same same <laughs> age range <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> yeah but i did go to a bridal shower today so i'm a little smidge overdressed but it's for a wonderful bridal shower we love her we love her and i just wanted to give her a little special shout out not only for having the cutest bridal shower ever i already saw the instagram stories and i'm in love and bridal showers can be very hit or miss like sometimes they're a little interesting sometimes they're in like a strange location this was at a lake it was beautiful yeah it was so sunny today her, it was warm but not too warm it was a little amazing breezy. And yeah her family put on and she listens to our podcast through and through hi <laughs> so i wanted to give her a little shout out because we love her and she's not a reptile person either no so. which i think is like the most flattering no i know truly thing. if you have someone who's not even to reptiles yeah. and is like thinking that what we're saying is cool it and interesting interesting like, i know enough and, to listen to 20 episodes and she actually you'll appreciate this she specifically mentioned today that she didn't know that chameleons don't change colors oh uh for camouflage i know it's such a misconception you taught her something (laughs) happy to do it i'm sure she's not the only one i'm sure there's someone else listening that was like (gasps) what no for sure no idea for sure yeah yeah it's my only like trivia question i can get right but (laughs) but that's the only thing that i've done since i saw you last (laughs) yeah sounds sounds about right yeah Yeah. well so to get right into the topic today Mm -mm -mm. this one it feels like it could be obvious to some people but it's not obvious unless you're like in the hobby really yeah and you have to like think about it yes for a second because i feel like even if you're in the hobby right it's not something well, like to prep for this episode i actually had to like sit down and kind of think like okay there are several, several different ways this can go so we're going to be talking about the differences between male and female reptiles yes which we have a lot. alluded to previously yeah. and i think we wrote down like oh we should do an episode about that so, for sure yeah. we're doing it yeah there's a whole lot of and there's a lot of different ways we can go where, yes. where do you want to start color i think that's like the go-to yeah a fun one so males and females will have and this is this is not for all species right pretty much let's mild disclaimer anything that we say in this episode specifically is species specific yeah so like we're not going to be getting hyper specific i don't want to see a comment that's like well actually (laughs) did you know no no if you want to teach us something like we are so happy to learn like so happy to learn but we're making generalization statement so if we if we say something that's not true for like an obscure species out there just let us know just let us know but in like a nice way (laughs) please that's all we ask yeah no so color and i can speak for what i think is a very Mm -hmm. obvious example the most obvious panther chameleons yes which we talk about with Barney's story mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. of how the vet thought that he was a girl because of yeah. his size. And you're like, uh, Hello. he's blue. Take, like, why? Take <laughs> one look at my little dude. <laughs> and okay, isn't there a technical scientific name? Do you know it by chance? Oh God, I should have looked this up before. There totally is one. But there it's like is. when the males are more colorful than the females, like with peacocks. I'm totally going to get this wrong. So please correct me this in the comments. You're allowed, please, you're allowed to say something. <laughs> please, please correct me on this one because I know I'm not going to get it right, but it's, I think it's sexual, it's not diamorphism because that's, that's something else, but it's, it's. Diamorphism? Maybe diamorphism. It, that sounds right. I think that, 
It's something along those lines. It's like sexual dia something. Mm -hmm. I think dimorphism. (laughs) I think that's right. But basically, it means that the males are more colorful than than the females. females, Like peacocks. I was just about to say peacocks. Yeah, that's a very obvious. (laughs) That's the number one. Very obvious example. Well, and I feel like that's one that most people know too. Ducks, right? Mm -hmm. Like just like mallard ducks, Mm -hmm. right? There's like Mm -hmm. the little brown one. And then there's like the cool colorful one. So same with panther commands. Mm-hmm. The males will have more color yeah. than the females. Now, the females, I think, can be stunning. They'll be like these peaches, these purples, oh, they're beautiful. like but oranges. In, but in their little muted pastel way. Exactly, exactly. So it makes the males more desirable yes. in the pet trade because they have the, the crazy colors mm-hmm. versus the females. Yeah. So that's one big example, obviously, between no, and that's, males I mean, and females. There's, it's also the same with like Jackson's chameleons. They have the horns. Females can have horns, though. Really? Ho, ho, ho. Learn something new. I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought it was only males. No, there's multiple species of Jacksons. and some species of Jacksons, the females have horns. So people think exactly what you think. See horns, think they have a male. Then she gives live birth. Because another fun fact, Jacksons will one. give live birth, yes. which a lot of people are like, oh, I Get thought shocked they by eggs. that, yeah. So now imagine you see horns, you think male, and then boom, there's babies. It's the most like... Wow. I learned yeah. something new today. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I appreciate that. I thought I was smart knowing that You're one. welcome. Okay. But if we want to talk about horns, Christopher Parsons, the yes. males will have a little, yes. not like a horn horn, but you know, what is it? Like Bumpies. a Bumpies. Yeah. Little yeah. nibs. Yeah. Um, whereas the females won't mm-hmm. have those. But. Well, and it's also, I actually have a couple in my notes. Let me triple check. But so I had specifically for color, I had obviously, you know, panther chameleons, iguanas are also this way. So mm-hmm, the males mm-hmm. have like the big crazy spikes and like the you know, I forget what it's called. The gullar like yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. And caiman lizards have the bright red heads for the males and the females aren't nearly as bright. We just saw those lizards yesterday where they had kind of like the spine kind of like little. Where, oh, oh, basilisks. Yes. yes. So those were very mm-hmm. obvious male, male female. Versus the female. colors were so it's also, different. So just on that note and talking about the horns and everything, it's not always just the color. It's mm-hmm. like. It's that sexual dimorphism, if that's the right word. Somebody, please, I'm going to be saying <laughs> that wrong be this so whole sad episode. So we're wrong. Uh, but it's that difference. Yes, the visual yes. difference with the intention, at least my understanding, that they're trying mm-hmm. to attract the females, yes. right? Totally. Yep. Totally. And like the electric blue day geckos, the mm-hmm. males are the really bright ones. So just a few examples of how it like varies. Yes, which is interesting in the reptile hobby yes. because typically those bright, colorful ones are that mm-hmm. have the additional body features for mm-hmm. lack of a better word are usually more desirable and more expensive totally. than the females for that reason 100 alone yeah. yeah that's so interesting and then there are some species like for example blue tongue skinks are not different mm-hmm. at all like and you know some breeders will tell you like you can tell by like the head size like a lot of people will say that the male blue tongue skinks have like thicker bulkier heads and sometimes that's true but sometimes it's not but like for so, instances, geckos are similar colors, mm-hmm. but one will have junk in the trunk exactly. and the other one mm-hmm. won't wear skinks and they don't have it's all tucked inside. The junk in the so. trunk. So that can make it difficult to sex mm-hmm. them. And I remember you telling me, you're like, I'm not sure if Nilla's a girl or not. I'm at this point in Nilla's lifetime, I am 98% sure that she's female because at this point I have had her for going on six years and I have yet to find a single sperm plug. I was going to say, I fig- like I wasn't yeah. sure, but you would find... I, If she was a male, I like to think that I would have found a sperm plug by now. And so I'm pretty positive We're just she's gonna a girl. Go for it. We're going to go for a girl. But Until five years from now, you have a gender reveal party for right. Nilla. And it's like, just right. kitty. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the next one, so we covered color. Yes. So the next one I'm going to say is size. And this kind of goes along with like the color and like body feature and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So specifically what I think about when it comes to this is like nine times out of 10 with most snake species, the females are far bigger than the males massive far bigger yeah like i personally am in the camp as somebody who owns a yellow anaconda i am in the camp of of belief that most people should not own female green anacondas because they get so insanely that's, that's big. an extra 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 big snake yes an anaconda yes. that's female that's green yeah 
Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. That's a big snake. And most people are, you know, keeping them in like an eight foot, eight or 10 right. foot enclosure. Just, yeah. No. And it's just like, I'm sorry. To anybody out there who keeps green anacondas, do your thing. That's fine. I personally would never keep a 15 plus foot snake in a, an eight to 10 foot enclosure. So that's just me. But this is true also for like ball pythons, right? Yes. Even the mm-hmm. smaller species that are more mm-hmm. commonly kept, the females will be yes. bigger than the males. I think. Um, someone I knew had a ball python. They like took them in. I think they were told they were female. And oh, then yeah. I saw them and I was like, uh, that's that a, a little snake. That's not a girl. That's not a girl. And he was like 10 plus years old. So like yeah. by far full grown. I was like, oh, congratulations. Yeah. It's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later. Yeah. Yeah. No, but snakes in particular. So for people who are new to the reptile keeping hobby, when it comes to male versus female, when you're like looking for an animal, depending on the species, you want to be really aware of the differences in size. Because like, for example, people who, you know, if you just Google yellow anaconda size, it's going to say 12 to 15 feet on Google. That's the first thing that should, that is not true. Males typically stay under 10 feet between seven to 10. So like when you're looking into it, you want to talk to breeders and all those kind of things about the differences between the males and females yeah. in that way. Are the females usually more expensive than the males because they get bigger? Do you notice a difference? It varies. I could be wrong, but I feel like with snakes, it has more to do with like the morphs and the lineage and the genetics right, right, right. versus... Yeah, obviously that's going to factor into yeah. price. I just wasn't sure if a male or a female... Maybe a, a maybe a little. Honestly, I okay. haven't noticed a huge enough difference. Yeah, not enough for you to be like, oh, no, no like yeah, that one's more expensive because it's a girl. Yeah, I will say actually, actually, like if you look on Morph Market and stuff, the like, and I'm just thinking in anacondas because that's my brain, but like the female green anacondas will be significantly bigger or uh, more expensive, but that's because they're so much bigger. Right. Well, that's so, what I'm saying. I wonder yeah. if it factored into the. I think it the price and desirability and you know I whatever think it else does. But again, it's it's not usually enough for me to notice. And they're also the ones that lay the eggs, right? True. So like from a reproduction, mm-hmm. potential breeding standpoint, mm-hmm. the females are more desirable mm-hmm. because they're the ones who lay the clutches. And that kind of takes us right into our next <gasps> category, right? So it's super important, again, for anybody getting into reptiles to understand I would say this is typically more with lizards than with snakes. Oh, wait. But we should talk about sizes for lizards. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We were only talking about snakes. Because male lizards yeah. are usually bigger. They're significantly bigger. Than the females. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure we round out so people don't mm-hmm. think that. We're only talking about snakes All the here. girl yeah. reptiles are bigger than the boy <laughs> reptiles. Sorry, guys. I got ahead of myself here. Well, then we'll go to the eggs. Don't worry. Yes. We're coming back. But but specifically, lizards are often, you know, again, not with like blue tongue skinks, but with chameleons, they're far, far bigger. Males are. And yeah, iguanas are far bigger. So it definitely has to do with lizards too. I'm trying yeah. to think of other specifics that are big differences in size. But I don't know about turtles or tortoises if there's big size differences mm-hmm. between the males yeah. or females. I don't either. Neither of us have kept turtles or tortoises, yeah. so it's very much outside our yeah. So let us know knowledge. if you're a turtle or tortoise person. Keep yeah. us posted. Yeah, but, but lizards for sure. And then I think frogs again, are just similar sizing. Interesting note with snakes, it's usually females who are bigger, and with lizards, it's usually males who are bigger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, which can be a pro or con depending on mm-hmm. like the enclosure mm-hmm. size or how big of an animal mm-hmm. you want to like, work with. With Tarzan, I was very specific. I had zero interest in having any female anaconda. Period, just from size alone. And I was like, yeah. I want to have the miniest anaconda <laughs> that you can have. <laughs> The most little one. There's just a miniature one that's also, you know, still going to get eight or still nine Still a giant snake. Still yeah. a giant snake. <laughs> no, no getting around that. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we touched no, on. No, thank you for that. I jumped because ahead of myself. Because that's the opposite of the, yes. the snake thing. Okay. Yes. So back to the egg thing. Mm-hmm. So females will lay eggs, mm-hmm. which the reason why we wanted to bring this up, because this goes into husbandry and yes, care of owning time. a mm-hmm. female reptile. Now, it's not going to make a big difference in purchasing them mm-hmm. or any of that stuff, but it's something you have to be aware of that they will lay in fertile clutches, yeah. which I always like to use the analogy of chickens. Totally. We're just like chickens without ever being with the male, they will still produce and mm-hmm. lay eggs, which means you as a keeper have to make yeah. sure you're providing proper care for mm-hmm. one so that they're able to yep. lay their eggs, be able to know what signs to look for, mm-hmm. for when they're laying their eggs and then how to prepare so that they can safely 
totally. lay them. And again, just to clarify, that was like a very big generalization. Yeah, I tried to it, speak it, in like I know big terms yeah, <laughs> because with with snakes, snakes don't often lay in fertile eggs. They can. Oh some yeah, can. okay. I was definitely thinking lizards. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. geckos, chameleons. Totally, all yeah. that, and that yeah. is typically the case. Like the most common ones are. Chameleons, bearded dragons, leopard geckos, African fat tail geckos, they always f- will frequently lay in and fertile eggs. Gargoyle geckos, 100%. Poke has laid. She, yes, she has. You found one. A single mm-hmm. egg. <laughs> single little caved in Not infertile egg. Infertile egg. Yeah. So, but it's super important. Mm-hmm. And you have to realize that you're signing up for that because yeah. of the amount of stress mm-hmm. that you have to yeah. go through as your female's getting well, ready to lay eggs. It, like specifically with poke, whenever I build her enclosures, I always make sure it's a deeper substrate layer. So she has, her. yeah, able mm-hmm. to, to yeah. lay them. So. And if your care is not correct or your female's just not unable mm-hmm. to lay her eggs, you're running into territory of becoming egg bound. Yeah. Which, in my opinion, is one of probably the most preventable causes of death because typically, and there's always you know, exceptions to this. Typically it's the result of improper care or not having a lane bin or not even know you have a female. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, SOS, what's going on? And then it's like, oh, actually she's a girl and she's getting ready to lay eggs and she's got metal block bone disease and, 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 and it just- AKA, you're in trouble. (laughs) Does not usually end well, unfortunately. But but that's just an important thing to know when you're looking into like buying reptiles, you know, make sure that, you know, whatever species you're looking into getting, make sure, you know, is it one that lays infertile eggs? Because- If so, that also can impact their lifespan because of said health concerns. And what can you do with their care? And I'm thinking, Camila, is why I'm saying this, that can decrease how often Mm -hmm. they lay. I know people who have female chameleons who have gone two years without laying a clutch. And they're like, is something wrong? Why isn't she laying? And like, walk me through your care. And their care is so on point, so tailored for a female specifically that they're able to kind of, I'm going to use the word manipulate, but I don't mean in any type of way. But basically... Like make sure that her body is not the laying schedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So by having slightly lower basking uh-huh. temperatures and by feeding them less often, so not overfeeding them or keeping wow. them too warm, those two factors alone can decrease how often they lay and how many eggs they're laying. I knew the how many eggs they're laying, but I didn't know the the yeah. time difference. So people That's who so are interesting. unintentionally overfeeding or mm-hmm. too warm temperatures, their females can lay it as often as once a month. You know, 30 That's a plus nightmare. Oh my gosh. Eggs. You could not pay me to go through like, oh, it's so stressful when they yes. do. And the little bodies, they have to mm-hmm. dig, they have to produce all those eggs I, and then lay them. And then females don't yeah. end up living as long as the males because mm-hmm. they're going through this egg laying process right. so often. So again, something to just be aware of when you're deciding if you want a male or female, females can unfortunately live less long because they have more health risks. Yeah. And there can be nuances to their mm-hmm. care being slightly slightly mm-hmm. different and like i yeah typically tell new keepers don't get a female you know most of the time be whether it be for size or egg laying like if you're new to the hobby and if you've never kept a reptile before you know it's that you're gonna be in for a, a shock it's, it's a lot but i don't want to scare anyone off from getting no, no, a no, female no, no, no. because i think if you're educated, if you're mm-hmm. aware, if you know what you need to do, totally. can learn the signs of, mm-hmm. you know, when a chameleon becomes yeah. receptive, gravid, whatever, mm-hmm. then I think you can successfully keep Easily. them. And there's a lot of pros to females. Like one we wanted to talk Absolutely. about was temperament. Mm-hmm. And I That's think, my favorite one about the girlies. <laughs> and I think historically, like what I know of my own reptiles mm-hmm. and from hearing from other people is the males tend to be a little feistier than the females and when you think about it it makes sense because they're protecting their territory they're potentially like i also find it's usually slightly aggressive mating behavior in the males too yeah like that can be a very big or they have to like you know fight off males Mm -hmm. that are potential Mm -hmm. now that they are coming across yeah but like it's in their dna to be like "Mm." well Oh, I'm having a little bit of a Barney flashback and it wasn't an aggressive behavior thing. It was actually a really cute thing, but he was always <laughs> sexually attracted to screens. His little head Bobby. <laughs> he would, if I, you know, I would have him on my shoulder, or, you know, on me holding him and I'd be on my phone, you know, scrolling or whatever, or I'd be watching TV or even on my work computer. I would Mm -hmm. often have him sitting in a little tree next to my desk. And when he would catch like a glimpse of the screen, he would head bob 
which is a is it when the screen behavior. was on or mm-hmm. even if the screen was off only when it was on okay so it was okay the, it was like the colors of the screen yeah. he got confused he was just a little confused but he would head bob yeah mm-hmm. no so i think the the males and now there are always exceptions right yes. like yes. there are plenty of males who are total chill sweetie hearts yeah. like whatever and then there's plenty of females who want to bite your hand off mm-hmm. and say get away from me venus is one of those which is fine <laughs> she hates the dudes fun well even me right she's yeah. just like a very defensive mm-hmm. very scared chameleon she's like Mm-mm-mm. no one come near me and that's fine but from what i've heard after they lay their first clutch then they their temperaments out. will like kind of mellow so interesting fingers crossed because she's showing signs of being gravid right now so mm-hmm. i'm hoping and this will be an infertile clutch but yeah. i'm hoping that like when she lays those then she'll be a little better hopefully yeah but yeah, what has been your experience? Because you have a variety of males yeah. and females. Do you see any trends? Absolutely. And it's very, very similar to what you were saying. Like, for example, my male New Caledonian geckos have always been insane. <clears throat> Monkey. <clears throat> cough, and, cough. Uh, <laughs> honestly, though, Scooby, as he's gotten older, too, has been a little wildling. So they it, that's definitely, definitely and then you have a big poke. one. Who's just a happy little she's gecko? Just a, she's just a little just potato. Chilling. She's yeah. just a little potato. She just sits. She barely moves. She moves from her hide to one branch and back into her hide during the daytime. She's, she's a, so chill. a lady of routine. Yes. Yep. She is. And so I that tends to be my experience is that the males tend to just be a little crazier. Now you do have one female snake, mm-hmm. two male snakes. Hazel can be a little Which is funny feisty. when it comes to snakes, Hazel is the one that's a little bit more it's not that she's feisty, she's funny because it's it's just the fact that she doesn't trust me. It's it's very like she's just a little like skittish. Weary kind yeah, of she's very weary. It's mm. it's I like I can tell it's not that she's just like hyper defensive. She just is always side eyeing me. Like <laughs> always side such an accurate, <laughs> accurate it? way of describing her isn't it she's it just totally so is. she just i just feel like she's judging me 100 percent. like, like I my deepest darkest secret she knows all of them and she, she's judging me that's exactly the look that she gives you yeah. she it just so she is my like skittish snake and that is why i'm very choice-based handling with her i pretty much don't handle her unless i have to or you know, unless she wants to come out. But, and then Tarzan's a total sweetie, always has been. And Taz is just a spaz. He's, he's a corn just, snake. He's, it's just. <laughs> that's a colubrids for you. But yeah, I mean, so I would say it kind of varies with snakes for me. My female has been, you know, a little iffier. And then the males have been more chill. But with the geckos, it's the opposite. So who knows? Yeah. And Voldy and the, being and a it, male, Voldy's crazy. And it, so. it just, it totally depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. But if you keep enough animals, you know enough about the species, yeah. you can typically see mm-hmm. trends. But I would never encourage someone to get a, like a male or a female just based off of temperament no. trends alone. Yeah. Because then you're going to end up with the crazy one. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I told you so. <laughs> because it just is like a total crapshoot. Totally. Same with like species. Like, oh, this species is more chill. And then you Dude, end up with the crazy one. And it's just I, how it goes. This is a minor vent. There, the one thing, the one comment that I think drives me the most that I get sometimes is people asking for like reference or uh, recommendations for what kind of snakes to get. Yeah. And, and I always get the question of what kind of snake like never bites and i'm like none <laughs> none don't get a snake like don't get a snake if you don't want one that's might bite you and it's for all reptiles though right it's yeah. like so it's it, it, you never know like you can the species you know doesn't matter because you know people always like for example yellow anacondas are supposed to be super feisty but mine's an angel so you know yeah it, they're just it varies with the temperament so it, we would be silly not to at least reference it yes when we're talking about males versus females because there are differences and so it's worth mentioning absolutely and obviously yeah. the hormones play a role in that yeah so. if you're looking for a new enclosure for one of your critters be sure to check out the ones from zen habitats every enclosure is customizable allowing you to mimic nature and provide the various uvb and heat gradients required for your species which means they'll work great for both tropical and arid environments One of our very favorite things is how easy Zen makes it to stack multiple enclosures with their stacking spacers and their extension kits allow you to be even more efficient with your space. All of their enclosures, stands, and spacers come with a five-year warranty and free shipping on all their orders. Check out zenhabitats.com for your next enclosure. Need crickets delivered to your doorstep for all of your hungry reptile and amphibian friends? Josh's Frogs has got you covered. We've mentioned so many times on the pod how convenient, well-priced, and healthy it is to buy your bugs online. 
Josh's Frogs now offers auto delivery for your commonly ordered items. You choose the products, frequency, and preferred delivery day. They take care of the rest. They offer a range of feeder cricket sizes to fit your pet's needs, all the way from pinheads up to one inch. Head on over to joshesfrogs.com and use coupon code THEWILDTYPE10 to save 10% on your next order of live crickets. April showers bring Pangea sales. They're coming out strong with a 20% off sale on egg organizers and hatch combo for any of our breeder listeners. And if you're in the market for new branches, they'll be 15% off. This includes Manzanita, Grapevine, Ghostwood, and Junglewood. Looking for a new mister? They'll be doing a 15% off sale for Pangea hand misters and Exoterra pump misters. And last but not least, at the very end of April, you get a free sleeve of small bio cups with a purchase of $75 or more. Check out PangeaReptile.com. So the other one we wanted to mention was lifespan. So yeah. we briefly touched on how female chameleons will typically have shorter mm-hmm. lifespans than the males. What has been your experience with other species? That is also very true. Specifically, my brain is going to uh, New Caledonian geckos and leopard geckos and African fat tail geckos. So those three species in particular the females do tend to have slightly lower lifespans just because of the the egg egg laying. laying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with snakes, I don't think it makes a difference. I I haven't seen or heard much. And I think it's because snakes don't often lay in fertile eggs. Yeah. I'd be curious, but it's rare. I'd be curious if a breeder female Uh, would have a shorter lifespan than a non breeder female. That's a great question. Right. Because of the demand of laying Mm -hmm. those eggs, like, you know, well, makes a difference. And, and with snakes too, they're not all eggs. So a lot of snakes true, true, are true. Live, live bears, bears too. Yeah. So. Well, just the reproduction. We'll just the put reproduction the reproduction process. It's a little bit trying on us ladies. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So I'd be curious to see if breeder females mm-hmm. end up having shorter lifespans. Yeah. My gut says yes, but I'd like to hear directly from a yeah. breeder what their I would love to hear that too. Cause I obviously wouldn't know. Yeah. So yeah. that's where, that's where our expertise <laughs> stops. And we're not, that's as far as we, <laughs> as far as we go on those combos. Yeah. Yeah. Was there but anything else you wanted to mention with? Not on the males and females. I think males are females. I feel good about everything we just covered. Yeah. I've kept both males and females. Mm-hmm. And so it's been interesting to see the, yeah, the differences. differences, especially for same species, right? Totally. To have one male Ambilobi panther, one female Ambilobi mm-hmm. panther, like same locale, same species and mm-hmm. see their yeah. see their differences so interesting yeah, yeah. but let us know ones. your thoughts if yeah. you're kind of if there's anything we missed because there are plenty of differences so if there are other yes. differences that you guys know of let us know let us know or do you prefer to keep yeah males which do you females? prefer do you like the igling process some people love that the like, colorful colors duller colors yeah because I've, I've, sizes. I've met people that have, you know, big preferences for, you know, female panthers yeah. over males and things like that. So totally it varies. But so I think the next thing we had a question, Q and a Q and a, and this one is from habitual homebody. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to look at my notes because you comment all the time. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you. We appreciate you. And so they specifically asked us, which I love this. This is a little bit of like a behind the scenes of the pod yes. question. So they asked us who edits the videos and who edits the episodes, which I think the distinction there is like audio video. But then we also have who does the social clips yes. and that stuff. Yes. So this is actually a question I got on my Neptune the Chameleon oh, Q&A. Yeah. And so I thought it'd be fun to answer it real time on yeah. the podcast. So. And again, this, this, you know, listener is always commenting. Yeah. So we yeah, appreciate yeah. you. Plus I'm sure some, uh, some of the other listeners are like we've, curious. We've had a couple questions about it. So. Yeah. So this is how we divvy up the work because mm-hmm. if one person tried to run <sighs> this entire podcast, no, thank you. You'd explode after two episodes. Yeah. So what usually happens is mm-hmm. I will edit the long form. So we're talking mm-hmm. the entire episode, the intro, outro, mm-hmm. like I'm the one who edits the ads so we'll film them together yes. but then i'll be the one who puts them all like yeah together and then puts them into the episodes takes the graphic pairs it with yes. the audio yada yada yes and then i'm the one who does the thumbnails mm-hmm. time stamps titles descriptions you're, let's be honest you're the youtube queen i do all the youtube stuff mm-hmm. and then everything that goes on spotify yeah. apple mm-hmm. all that i'm the one who does all that then i take it all bundled up and then i give it to you I get a pretty little package and then I slice it all up <laughs> into clips. <laughs> so I take, I take, you know, the, the full episode, you know, 4k and all of that. And then I put it all into my nice little 
editing software and I chop up all the different clips for social. Yep. And then I also handle the scheduling and posting of all the content. Yes, and you'll put well. the captions on there mm-hmm. and like stack them and then like yeah. make them all I make easy it all, to consume. I make, and I make it all cute. Yeah. Yeah. And then things we do together is we'll do the like trendy videos. Mm-hmm. We usually like we'll send each other yeah, stuff different ideas. like oh, we should do this for a podcast. And then usually we'll do it right after filming. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, we'll pick like, you know, once or once a week or every couple of weeks and batch create some yes. of those. And we change outfits. Yes. In between. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've different had a, a stack of my clothing <laughs> yeah. over there. <laughs> and then we'll both take turns responding to DMs or comments. Yes. It's kind of like whoever sees them. Mm-hmm. first but i would say yeah. you probably respond to vast majority of the i try to just because i'm usually the one doing the posting so yeah. it usually just i usually see them you know first but sometimes you catch some stuff before i do yeah so it just depends but i will say when it comes to like comments and dms in particular if anybody's ever asking anything that's like really specific for example obviously any something that's like not chameleons that you may or may not have the answer to like yeah. we'll usually just like message each I'm like, other hey there's this comment yeah you should respond to yeah. it or like hey this one's right. for you or sometimes we'll get comments and we'll like basically say like hey this is neptune or yes. hey this is lissa mm-hmm. so then like because we'll be sharing a specific mm-hmm. example or personal experience right. or something. So we want if, them to know, like, if it's coming the comment, from us. If the comment or question, like, requires something that only one of us knows, we're usually going to be like, hey, Lissa here. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's me. Some, it's me, Mario. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll sometimes, you know, drop in there exactly yeah. who's responding just because, like, if there's something that's, like, super chameleon specific, yeah. I don't want people to think it's me answering yeah, yeah. and, like... You know. but we have a pretty good split. So you do mostly the social stuff. Mm-hmm. I do mostly the like actual editing of mm-hmm. the the episodes, mm-hmm. and then we go back and forth on like posting stories or comments yeah. or DMs or yeah. That Specifically, kind of stuff. the stories can definitely be from either of us. Yeah, it's it's hit or miss. It's just yeah. like whichever one. Yeah, yeah. Whoever's got an extra couple minutes that day. <laughs> Truly, <laughs> like well, uh, we haven't posted. And there are like days. and there are some days too. Like for example, if I have like a really insane week or something, or if you have a really insane week, like yeah. Sometimes I'll just like send you clips like I know yeah. there was a weekend recently that like I was out of town and I was like here are all the clips yeah post whenever yep. do whatever you so want and I, I just ran the socials but that's yeah. because we both have our own Lives. accounts and stuff well I was gonna say oh. accounts oh that we both have experience <laughs> like too. doing mm-hmm. all that it's not like you don't know how or I don't know like well, we yeah. can both just like yeah. and I think if it. worst came to worst I would be able to ep- edit the I podcast I would love to see you in Premiere Pro trying to figure out I've played with <laughs> Premiere Pro before okay okay no, I didn't do I've it. played with it a lot no you you could hold your own yeah. especially I basically have like a template now mm-hmm. that I work in so I have full confidence yeah. that if I sent you that then you it would, would just probably be a little bit less smooth <laughs> it'd probably also take you a bit longer twice as long (laughs) for sure learning curve learning curve no but before we even started the podcast this is something that we kind of talked about like what things do you want to do and Mm -hmm. what things do you not want to do Mm -hmm. and you were like i do not want to edit no the full episodes i was like i i can't I'll lose my mind. I yeah. hate long form content. And it's I was like, why I don't post on YouTube. I was like, look, I've been doing YouTube for many years now. Yeah, doing a podcast is way easier than truly doing like a YouTube videos. It got mm-hmm. like tons of clips in it and whatever. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll do this. You take socials. Mm-hmm. We'll meet in the middle for the other stuff. It's honestly, it it's been kind of a perfect split. Honestly, yeah. it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. So there you guys go a little yeah. behind the scenes yeah. on pulling back the curtain. Just how a we do the. Yeah. The, all the editing mm-hmm. and everything And then we, we like to take turns doing our little intro, go back mm-hmm. and forth, kind of yeah, leading things. Yeah, I don't know if you guys that, but like, yeah. we'll switch every other episode where mm-hmm. like, I'll take the lead, kind of. Welcome to the Wild Type Podcast. I'm Lissa Slizzards. Or when you do it. And then when and I then say, yeah. go back and yeah. forth. And we, yeah, we kind of yeah. try to split it up a little, you know, but overall. Yeah, I think it's fun. Keep us on our toes. Yeah, that's our, that's our little process. So you're leading this episode. So what's next? Well... I have to ask you that question. It's funny. I already knew what was coming. But <laughs> because this is a pretty big one. You got mm-hmm. some news for us? So literally yesterday, which is going to have been a couple weeks by the time this episode comes out. So right. yeah. apologies. This is going to seem like old news. But I did want to talk about it. So, so I excited. have a foster chameleon. We're fostering. You're fostering. <laughs> but I'm, I feel... You can say we. It's fine. <laughs> I feel like I get to join them. You're like the fun too. auntie. I'm the funny you know? aunt. I'll come by and feed him. I'm yeah, at you least going to check the, on him. Bring, bring some hornworms, yes. right? That's like... Yes. I feel like the reptile auntie equivalent of like a I, human auntie bringing like... I bring hornworms. Candy for the kids, yes. you know? I bring or, treats. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let's bring some hornworms. He'll love you. So his name is Sox, and he is through. So cute, I could cry. He's a pied veil command, so the Sox is kind of cute because he's got white and pink mm-hmm. patches on him. Um, and so he's from a reptile rescue mm-hmm. that was actually at a table that we were at an event. Mm-hmm. And we were just chatting them, and I was like really thinking about. It. I was like, I've got the space, I've mm-hmm. got the time, I've got the knowledge, I've got the resources. There's literally no reason like in the knowledge, right? That I can't be fostering a chameleon. And I told him, I was like, young, old, MBD, healthy, whatever, whatever. like any species send in my way, I'm happy to do it. I was like, I can only do chameleons Mm -hmm. and I can only do one at a time. Those are my only- Only restrictions. My only two things. Like, thank you so much. Like we don't have a lot of people who can take in chameleons. And so this is fostering them in the hopes that you'll you'll take care of them until they can be adopted and find their forever home. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. Here's my information. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's such a bummer yeah. because like we have. Because I was here for this part of the conversation. Yeah. So I left the event a little bit early. And so I got a text later. <laughs> so continue. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's such a bummer because we have this veiled mm-hmm. in socks. And they're like, but we already have a foster lined up. And I was like, oh, okay, well, like hit me up for the, the next, next one. one. Yeah. So you end up leaving. I end up sticking around at the event for like a couple hours extra and then I'm literally in the parking lot like leaving and I hear across the parking lot like hey chameleon lady <laughs> and of course I'm like who me <laughs> that's incredible first off I, and I was love like, that oh. and they're like do you want this is across the parking lot do you want to take that chameleon home and I was like sure so then I walk over find out that the foster that was supposed to come never showed oh. so then the chameleon would have gone to like one of the like um club Re- members rescue or people yeah yeah um, who's been like kind of temporarily watching him um and I was like sure they're like do you have a transportation like device like container for him I'm like not really no <laughs> I wasn't expecting to leave here with a chameleon no but I do have a temp enclosure yeah. in like I've got extra UVB heat bulb whatever I was like I can whip up a, an enclosure for him in like five minutes like yeah. not a big deal easy one, yeah. of the, one of the perks of being in the reptile keeping experience for yeah you unfortunately years. fortunately accumulate an extra supplies well, of and that of was stuff. one of the reasons we were talking to them in the first place because yeah we, we were like hi guess what we have tons of extra, reptile extra supplies, supplies. Yeah. And like some of the extras I want to hold on to for when I need them, but I have so many extra things I could just donate. So like that's, that's something we'll be doing as well. But yeah. So they had me sign just a little piece of paper, you know, just being like, Hey, you're responsible for this. Here's my number. They said most fosters are for about three months before they're able to find them new homes. I'm hopeful I'll be able to find him a home a little bit sooner with like my platform. The only thing is it has to be a local pickup. So they're not gonna be like shipping him cross country. So literally so cute, you guys. So I, so I left this event thinking that we were not going home with any animals. And then all of a sudden, Just I, get bugs. A, we're going home I, with bugs. I get a photo of Mr. Sox and the background in the photo was your My room. reptile room <laughs> wall. And I was like, excuse me. Yeah. What happened? So I took him and I was yeah. like, cool. I've never actually cared for a veil chameleon. I've mentored thousands yeah. of people on veil chameleon. So I'm like, I have no hesitations or yeah, whatever with him um he already gobbled up 10 dubia roaches Aww. i had to pick up some smaller ones because i only have adults right now so i only have larges which oh, have yeah. been too big for his totally. little, little head um so he already gobbled those up which is very surprising because he's in a brand new enclosure it would typically it takes him a little time to get well and settled he was in. like at that event yesterday mm-hmm. too so like homeboy was and probably I took a him little out stressed of the enclosure and the lady who had been watching him was like oh he's defensive da, da, da. and i was like all right like I've seen the worst of the worst. Yeah. And like he came out no problem. I was like, cool. Sweet. So and just the backstory on how socks yeah, like I don't even know this. Yeah. So this is uh, then this is through the grapevine, right? This is what the rescue said right. he found out from whoever. Right. So allegedly. Yeah. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> but I guess he was a Christmas purchase for a seven year old boy. And the mom of course he was. Of course like he was. decided that they didn't want him anymore for X and Y reasons. But they had tried to sell him on like Facebook Marketplace for like three or four hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's she's I making a face. You can, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> she's making a face because I'm shook. Like, yeah. let's be real. Veiled chameleons don't go for three or four hundred dollars. Yeah, and I guess he was like in kind of like the kit set up initially and like mm. the whole shebang. So they weren't getting any bites, and they had him up for like a month, and like no one was saying that they were wanting him or willing to pay that. So they're like, we just, we just don't want yeah. him anymore. So then that's when they surrendered him over to the, the rescue. That's so sad. And oh I think God. the rescues had him for like three, four weeks or something at oh. this point. So 
hate that. And now I hate I'm it. taking care of. At least he ended up in the socks. right hands. Yeah, totally in the right hands. I'm so excited for this though. It's and such for, a it's such like a moment in your yeah. journey as like you're now in the foster world. Mm-hmm. To feel like I'm in a place both like financially, mm-hmm. emotionally, like mentally, and experience wise, that like totally. if they had a chameleon that comes in with metabolic bone disease, which realistically speaking is a possibility with just is, yeah. you know chameleons and stuff like that, I feel confident that I'd be able to care for them. Or if they mm-hmm. had like thermal burns, or they were an elderly chameleon mm-hmm. or a baby chameleon, like. I feel like I could handle easily just about any situation. Mm-hmm. And so for me to be able to like make sure that they're taken care of before right. being able to find them, it's they're really forever. Homes, yeah. Or if I can leverage my platform mm-hmm. to be able to find them, help find more, homes. more adopters. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really, really special. And so I'm very excited. It's so cute. Um, it just makes me really happy. So I hope socks is the first of, of many yeah. down the line of like chameleons. Totally. I can potentially take in a foster, but if socks is my, only one then like so be it a lot of people have been commenting like oh you're gonna keep him and now i'm like no 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 i will not no yeah. um he's a cutie though he's so cute yeah he's so cute and he seems to be in really good body condition i just noticed I at the say he wasn't he didn't look horrible at the by end any of means. his tail is this little divot what looks like a piece of shed probably got uh, like stuck, stuck on there and like constricted a little bit or maybe like closed in a door or something. Or something. I mean, with a seven-year-old kid, who knows? It, it just is very, very, very minor. And yeah. I don't think unless you like have a trained eye and you're like you're looking, looking for, for it. You won't abnormal, even see it. Yeah, you, I don't think you would even even notice mm-hmm. it. So if by the time this episode comes out and socks is still available, hit me up yeah. um, if you're interested in adopting him. But He's so cute. I'm so yeah. excited for you. It's so fun. Yeah. And so I know you had mentioned yes. potentially wanting to foster and, or work with rescues in the future. This is the same thing that I told the rescue people that we spoke to. I would love to do that. Literally would love that. It, there's would Nothing would bring me more joy and happiness than doing that. Um, especially after, I know it's not the same thing, but having gone through rescuing our dog and yeah. everything that we went through with that. Like, I just, I have a little bit of a heart for it. And so I just, I would love to do that, but I am not in a play. I am still recovering from my wedding year. So like, (laughs) I'm, I'm, and I mean that mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, everything. And specifically when it comes to like the reptile side of my life and all of that, like, I am still in the process of so many enclosures. That's been a slower progress than I would like to admit. I've still got so many more enclosures I need to upgrade. I need to improve. I need to. So I am not at a place where I am 110% happy with my current pets care and their environments. So I'm going to focus on fixing and improving all of that before I go into the foster world. Which it was what you should do. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so in an ideal world, maybe this time next year, once all my animals have been upgraded Mm -hmm, everybody's mm -hmm. enclosures are perfection and i'm super happy and content with everything then i would definitely look into it i don't think i would ever want to foster or be able to foster more than one or two at a time just because i obviously can't keep them in the reptile room if i'm fostering but yeah i think fostering geckos would be like right up your alley honestly that and i think that's what i told the rescue lady i specifically was like leopard geckos african fat tail geckos Cresties, anything along those lines, like I would love to foster. Yeah. I could see you potentially fostering snakes, but I know like yeah. geckos are more, especially with mm-hmm. fosters, like because you just don't yeah. know well their history or feeding response or like I would definitely fought like for example, like I have no interest in owning a ball python at this point, and we've talked about that, but I would definitely have an interest in taking in a rescue ball python. Mm-hmm. I would love to do that. And and when you when you're thinking rescues and fosters, you really have to think about like what are the most common reptiles that are being given up. Yep. And those Vail are Vale chameleons. Vale chameleons, bearded dragons, lep I would also consider fostering a beardy. Oh yes, you did say that when we I, were when we were there. And again, that's a species I have literally no interest in keeping as a pet, but I would love to foster a little beardy. Yeah, but that's that's short term, right? Yeah. Like that's not yeah. so short term, I mean Honestly, I'd be open to almost anything. So yeah. I would definitely wouldn't want to do a chameleon just because that's more your forte. <laughs> but give me the chameleon. Yeah. yeah. So very excited for this new adventure. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very interesting for me because I'm not one for like spontaneous. You are not. That is why things. I was so freaking shocked when I saw that text but message. But I felt 
so comfortable and so confident mm-hmm. that it was like a no-brainer like oh taking a veil chameleon like I've got an no enclosure. No sweat off my back. Got an enclosure. I have UVB. I have branches. I have fake plants. I'm I've good got to go. bugs. Like I'm. You're good to go. I'm solid. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like a like sure like right. no no biggie. It's funny. Obviously, I'm a little bit more impulsive than you. We know this, <laughs> but I I would be very wary of like spontaneously taking in an animal in that way because that's you know you don't know what you're bringing into your home at that mm-hmm. point. So that is a risk, but. I would feel the exact same way that you did if it were like a leopard gecko that needed specifically for my very first foster. If it had been a leopard gecko or something like that, I would have just been like, oh yeah, I can yep. set up a temp enclosure in no, five minutes. Let's no go. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got all the heat supplies. I got yep. everything. We're good to go. So it feels good to like be, you know, kind of like mm-hmm. helping out the yeah. the community and, you know, hopefully socks can find an amazing home, but yeah, I'm stay so tuned. We'll it's give so you guys fun. a update if and when he, you know, is yeah. adopted and yeah. whatever else. So such a fun little update. I yeah. love that. Well, let us know if you guys do rescue. If you're interested in rescue, we'd love to mm-hmm, hear from mm-hmm. you guys. But yep. Other than that, did we cover everything for the day? Wrap it up. Yeah, Let's I think this is a good episode. Right yeah, I think so too. So we're going to end it there, but give us a follow on all the socials. Yep, yep, yep. Send us voice memos. You know we love those. <laughs> you plug the voice memos. Because I love them. I just get <laughs> so time. hyped every time. No, I think it's great. They're my favorite. So, yeah. you know, give us a follow on all the things. Subscribe to YouTube. The whole shebang. Yeah. Yep. But other than that, we appreciate you guys. Yeah. Have a good day, guys. Thanks for being here. Bye.